हाई गाइज गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम बैक टू न्यू वीडियो एंड इट इज वन ऑफ द इजिएस्ट हार्ड क्वेश्चन एवर मेड विच मीन्स हार्ड एज अ लेबल एंड इजिएस्ट क्वेश्चन एज इन फोटोलॉजिक फर्स्ट ऑर आई एम गोन स्पीक आउट ऑफ वॉट इन टीशन आई एम गोन बी प्रोवाइडिंग फॉर दिस बिकॉज इट्स एन ईजी क्वेश्चन सो आई आई कैन जस्ट गो एन से ओके इट्स वॉट्स गोन बी अप्लाइड ऑल दफ वी विल सी वाई ग्रीडी अप्रोच इज एक्चुअली थॉट ऑफ इन दिस प्रॉब्लम So let's start with problem statement itself. Cool. Uh, I'll just not go to the entire problem statement with the example itself. If we actually go to the problem statement itself, uh, it just says that you have to uh, we have some marbles and we have to move those bar marbles to k bags according to the following conditions. And what are the rules like? You will see. So basically, if we have these marbles n marbles, so I have these n weights. Now I have this bag number which is two. So I have to do some partition of this. Such that okay, this if I do a partition like this okay, it is one partition, it is next partition. So the partition will add something like this one plus one, which means simple a plus b. I'll, I have to simply add if this is a partition, then start and end. So basically, I have to add the start and end weight of that partition itself. So here it is three plus one. So the actual weight after doing this partition is three plus one plus one plus one. and same goes if i just do a partition right here so 1 plus 3 it can be the left partition weight it can be the right partition weight and same i had to do to, i had to do two partitions so i put one bar i get something like this it is a weight um and same if i just put a partition right here so i can get a 1 plus 5 i just i'm concerned about the start and the end weight itself and 1 plus 1 with this it just shows how many partition i could have done and by this i can just simply go and say okay hey uh, what's the maximum i can get maximum i can get is 10 minimum i can get is 6 so answer is max minus min which is actually a 4 now here it was just two but it could have been many partition if i i would have said okay it's a b c d e f all the weights are there and i asked you and uh, let's say g h i j and i ask you uh, let's say it has have four partitions so you you can place partitions anywhere anywhere in this entire place 1 2 3 4 maybe 4 or maybe two anywhere it can it could have been placed so how will you think of this now one thing is i mean um i could see that okay partitions are there so for every weight i have two options either it will go to the existing partition or to the next partition so as i'm thinking of this okay it has two options maybe i can think of applying a dp concept or maybe something like that here um shall i proceed with that hold on hold on hold your horses i know you can't hold that thing but hold your horses um wait you will see that okay n is actually 1 e 5 which means i can apply a o of n or o of n log n algorithm i can't do a o of n square or more and especially o of n square or more when when, like, when i say it i mean o of n square n cube or even exponential part but if we think of applying even if we think of applying even dp then roughly it will come out to be nck why you if, if you go back and see okay if i just do a k partitions 1 2 3 4 5 let's say k is 5 so i will have how many places to place these bars i have to place these bars place these bars i have these four bars for k5 i have four bars which means k minus 1 bars and how many spaces are available for me to place these bars if i have these elements 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 9 9 so i have these n minus 1 locations to place my n my k minus 1 bars so it is these main number of possible options i could have to just make it all it like like this like to place these k minus 1 bars at this m minus 1 locations choosing n minus sorry choosing k minus 1 out of n minus 1 it's for sure exponential which is nothing but like roughly it is let's say it is as you meant it is nck so n factorial upon uh, r factorial upon n minus r factorial it's factorial it's exponential so for sure we can't think of applying db let's think of doing it in o of n or o of o of n log n for that you know okay it can't be applied um so let's see and find a pattern out of it if we just look at the standard like normal example a bigger one so i took at a b c it's just the weights uh, and k as 3 so k as 3 which means i need to place two partitions so i just place randomly place two partitions and i try to think okay what is actually the sum like because i'm concerned about the sum and more 
I'm concerned about the sums difference. So I just, I'm concerned about the maximum and the minimum sum. So why not, if any way I can just get the maximum sum or the minimum sum, maybe I can have some pattern like, right? So I'm just thinking of that pattern because I, I saw, maybe I try for the, because first intuition was DB, but I could not find it. It's way too much. So maybe there is something else I could try on for this problem. So let's go and see. Okay, it is a plus c. As you will see, it is a plus c. It is t plus d. It is a t plus d. It is h plus j. It is h plus j. But um, but if I just go for other pattern, let's say if I just remove this and I place here and here. So a plus b, a plus b, uh, a c plus g up h plus j. So it will change according to where I place the partition. So can I find something, something that, okay, something is happening that I can actually relate with this, what partition I'm playing in, what, what partition I'm placing in, I can actually go and ask him, hey bro, if you place a partition right here, it is constant for you. If I just not look at this like this, in this way, if I look in this way itself, you will see that as soon as I placed a partition right here, it just gets the value which is just beside it. C plus D, G plus H and for sure A and J which means SAT and N will always come. Why? Let's see. If I had a partition like this, A, so it is A, B plus C, F plus G and J. Cool. Here also if I place a partition, it is A, a D plus C, F plus G and a J. If I place a partition, it is A plus A because for sure I need a SAT and N. It's both same. So take both. But still, you saw A extra is coming in. Then A plus B. Cool. And then E plus F. And then J. If I had a A plus A, then okay. Cool. A is extra. A plus A for that. One A is taken. A plus B. And then I plus J. And then one J extra for last. So for sure, you saw A and J extra are coming in for sure. So I just, I just saw one thing. For this partition I placed in, I'm getting a value as C plus D. G plus H. And... If I just go back and look at the example above, I was getting the same stuff. I was just getting this thing that, okay, it was one. No worries. It is one plus three. It is five plus one. It is three plus five. So why not? I just grab this value. I just grab this value. I just grab this value. And I just want, okay, one such value because for sure I needed a two pairs. One pair is for sure gone because of this start and end as you saw here itself. Um, if you had this, so one pair is also always gone. So I need to choose K as three. If I just place two partitions, so for this corresponding two partitions, I will get these two pairs. A and A and J. Start and end will always be taken. So it will be taken in the maximum sum also and minimum sum also. So just ignore that. So if I had to choose a K as two, so I just choose K as one because start and end made a pair got automatically out. Out of these three, I will choose one maximum. So I get what a eight. I choose okay, it's a six. I choose it's a four. So eight minus four actually it's a four itself. That is how we found a pattern that instead of just grabbing this and this for a pair, let's grab this and this for a pair itself because it actually means the same stuff. And for this, I can relate for a pair itself. So what ultimately we can do is. We just had to get the maximum sum. So out of all the pairs which we made, and when I say all the pairs, I mean place in the bars at every place. And for every place, if we place a bar, I will get an A plus B. Here I will get a B plus C. Here I will get a C plus D. Here I will get a, a D plus E. Here I will get an E plus F. Here F plus G. Here G plus H. Here H plus I. Here I plus J. And such that I just sort all the pairs, get the maximum K minus one pairs. Why? A minus one because you saw above also for three pairs for three you just saw you just only require two although you can take this and this also but still it's redundant because it will come in both maximum and minimum so simply getting this uh, where it is gone getting the maximum sum by choosing the maximum of the k minus one pairs when i say pairs it's just the sum of consecutive element and one consecutive element sum is actually a pair i'm referring to so it is one pair it is next pair it is next pair it is next pair it is next it is next it is next 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 and next cool um and to get the minimum sum just choose the minimum of the k minus one pairs and just subtract them and simply get the answers so rn how to make these pairs simply getting the consecutive sum getting the consecutive sum 
and then when you have the consecutive sum just to sort this sums down sort this maybe take any array put all the consecutive sums in that just to sort it down and simply get the maximum of the k minus 1 pairs minimum of the k minus 1 pairs sum and then simply subtract that to get your answer and by this you will get all the 9 pairs sort them and get the answer cool very 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 easy but yeah the prime point was you thought of something then you then you just discarded that approach sorry uh, discarded that approach and then start to think of a pattern because you knew that if you think of db it won't work the complexity will be pretty high so think of a pattern itself to bring it out in o of n or o of o n log n and then we saw a pattern by placing bars and then getting the sum for each corresponding bar and then we actually thought okay huh we can use for every bar and every bar will have a corresponding sum and then we can use r to find it as a maximum sum and minimum sum and then we can use the answer uh, simply getting uh, okay i have this array called as candidates which means just the pairs so i'll get the pair sum consecutive pair sum every consecutive pair sum i will get in my candidates i will sort this because i knew i want to get the starting k minus one and ending k minus one pair sum so i will just sort it i'll just get in the minimum sum as starting k minus one so i'll just go on to the starting k minus one and get the minimum sum i'll go to the maximum sum to the ending k minus one and we'll get the maximum sum and ultimately return the maximum sum minus minimum sum and we'll get the answer by this you know you did a sorting so time is o of n log n and space is o of n because you are using one array to actually store the consecutive pair sum but if you want to actually reduce the complexity itself you can actually use a priority queue instead of actually so sorting because if you use a priority queue it will actually keep the k elements in the actual queue itself priority queue itself so simply it will always have the k elements so it will be n log k instead of n log n and space will be also o of k because you are actually placing only k elements in your queue it is only 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 good when k is very 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 less than n but still it's just one thing you can tell your interviewer to actually show so yeah that's it from for this video but yeah in this you learn that how you thought of one thing and then discarded it and then thought of a pattern and then pattern helped you to get this problem uh, thank you so much for watching. See you in another video. Take care. Bye bye.